All right, everybody, happy Tuesday. We are so excited to be here today. We have some pretty amazing things to share. I'm super excited. Yes. I'm Patty. I'm Carrie. Hello. And we are Studio R12, and we are a stencil company, but we are DIY painting. So if you found us someplace and you don't know what we're doing here, we're going to answer your questions about DIY painting and solve problems for you. Yeah, and that's exactly what our lesson is on today. We had a stencil fan ask us last week or the week before about how to paint a specific technique. And we thought, you know what? This is the perfect time to do it. Perfect we have time. a good lesson on it. So we are going to do that today. But before we jump into it, we do have a couple of announcements. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. So every Tuesday we go live at 12 p.m. Eastern on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitch. There's lots of ways to find us. And then on Saturdays on YouTube, we release more succinct videos. We love chatting on Tuesdays, but yes. we also know sometimes it's just nice to hear the lesson and get yeah. through with and it. And we're chatting on Tuesdays. Tuesdays, we're here for you yes. completely. Um, what your questions are, what things you need answered, mm -hmm. um, all of that kind of stuff. So we are actually talking here to, to tell you your answers. Yeah. So, But on Saturdays, we just do either a lesson or a paint tutorial or a project. Yes. So. And... Last Saturday on YouTube, we released a third video in our bleaching series, and last week we bleached a bandana. So it's showing you how can you can bleach a bandana, a handkerchief, a napkin. Fabric. Fabric. Yes. Fabric, you guys, the bleaching technique. If you haven't seen the bleaching technique through stencils on fabric, you need to check it out because it is magical and you can actually um, manipulate the amount of detail and depth that you get. Uh, you got to see the videos. Um, we did it, well, I guess we did it on t-shirts, all on fabric. So yes. t-shirts and, because uh, duh, like, we did yeah, every now and again we I did, say things and I'm like, We did t-shirts, we did a pillow case, yeah. and then we did the handkerchief. Yeah, and it's, it's just incredible what you can do with the bleach. And um, a sunny day, piece of fabric. Go yep. to it. And Stencils. it's super and it was a quick video too. And yes. before we talk about what's happening this coming week on YouTube, we have I have a funny comment that I want to share. So as we were Am I gonna spit my wing? Maybe. As we were going over what we are covering today and Patty and I were chatting through some things, she was talking about painting the background and why she painted the background that she did because for some reason, Patty always chooses to wear bell sleeves on Tuesdays. Bell sleeves! <laughs> so our friend Cindy said, Patty, I love your blouse, but must admit if I wore that near paint, I would be slinging paint everywhere. You are not alone, Cindy. Same. <laughs> and so I am going to show you a sub topic on this project that I have sitting in front of me that is going to show you what to do if you're wearing bell sleeves and you're afraid yes. of making big old long strokes um, because silliness. Um, yeah. What can I say? <laughs> you know, I need to be like a Tuesday memo in my in yes, my closet don't and wear be like, "This is Tuesday. Don't, don't wear bell sleeves. Don't wear bell sleeves. Don't schedule appointments." Yes, we just need to add a list. Um, so this week on YouTube, it is the time of year where you might be starting to switch out things from summer to fall, and we are going to show you a really fun fall decor piece for your front porch you guys wait until you see and there's a new brush in town and we found it at um the north american art materials yes. conference that we went to this summer and we went <laughs> and i yeah. think that's the sound i made it was it was an it's, incredible yeah, it's yeah. a cool brush yeah very cool you want to see how this works um I saved myself many stippling hours by using this new brush, so you're and gonna want to know. We're also showing with this. So when we paint doormats in the past, <laughs> spoiler, spoiler. <laughs> we it's a doormat. It's a doormat. <laughs> um, when we have done them in the past, we have always done them kind of similarly with design. Yes, and so we've always kept the matte color the same. And so this this time we took more spoilers. Yeah, we're just gonna go. We're there. just gonna like go. once it's spoiled. It's sorry, spoiled. sorry, um, friends. But, You're welcome. Um, yes. So just you know, know that. But this is gonna show you how you can paint the color of the matte into a different color and you're going to want to know how to do that because yes. there's a cool couple of tricks and then there's a cool new brush that saved me hours. Yeah. Hours. Yes. 
Yes, hours. it's definitely worth tuning in. Yeah. A uh, couple more announcements real quick about some fun things that we have going on here. So if you got our August 2023 project of the month, guess Ooh. what? They shipped today. Woo! They are out the door. They yep. are heading your way. The team is doing this. Yes, they are. <laughs> they are ready, ready for a relax. So those are already in the hands of the post post office you guys i can't wait to hear your feedback um we're super excited um i think we over delivered so i think so that you're going to be so amazed um and so just let us know what you think um yeah yeah I'm and excited, if, excited. if you if you did purchase one of those you have been added to a special email list and so we are going to start sending out some emails with some information and things for you to um, keep your eye out for and some other things. So keep your eye out for those emails as well. You'll get your first one later yeah, today. And we, we want you to be um, well prepared to use what we have sent in the box. So we are making sure to give you the communication that you need to use it. So um, we always are a champion of you yeah. guys. So we just want to make everything work successfully. Absolutely. And that. then this is something, so our project of the month is something we've been working for a couple years yeah. on. Like it's been two years. Yeah, two years. Two solid years. So our we other- We couldn't get out of our way. No. Yeah. And that's okay because yeah. we're pretty we're daggone ready. happy with how, yeah, it, how it went. I agree. We're also pretty daggone happy with the announcement Hi. we made yesterday. We are having an in-person painting event with Patty and myself Ta -da! Ta -da! in October. In yeah, Gallipolis. So, in Gallipolis, Ohio. Yeah. It's going to be at our, our boardroom boutique and painting mm -hmm. area. We have listing for tickets on the website. There are only 20 seats. They're only 20 and they're half gone. Yep. So we've already we gone to through jump some. On that. Yeah. Yes. And we have a bunch of things planned. It's going to be a... a Friday night, Saturday during the day event, we're gonna paint on more than one thing. Yes. And we have lots of things going on in our town that week that we think you that guys, you're gonna love I'm gonna as paint, well. I'm gonna paint the picture. So Southeast Ohio mm -hmm. on the Ohio, on the Ohio on River. On the Ohio River. Um, across from a block wide green city park that is gorgeous. The trees will have started turning um, the boutique is right there. We have the most charming town on earth. And then you bring in our biggest flea market that weekend. You bring in the Bob Evans, if you know Bob Evans sausages from your um, wherever you're coming from, um, from the grocery store. They started here in our county. And then you go into Rockets Over Rio. It's a big fireworks show after a big giant soccer thing. Like it's all happening the same week. It's amazing. So it's a neat week to come here. Yeah. So it's not, there won't be traffic, but if you are going to come and um, join us, you need to make your hotel reservations mm -hmm. early or make them a little bit further out. Yes. So that's. And then we also I got, wait we got everybody. in touch with our favorite winery. Yes. Who uh. we work with. We work with quite a bit anyway. Twisted Vine. They're the ones who, yeah. we, we have some fun cups that we do for them. Yeah. And we have made reservations for Saturday night. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna go hang out at the winery after we finish our painting. Oh, guys, and then gorgeous. if you would like to yeah. join us out in the middle of the country in yeah. fall with the changing yeah. of the leaves, yeah. like. Yeah, it's just gorgeous. So yeah, yeah. so we're super you guys, excited. It's, it's, it's a thing, Yeah, it's a, it's a good thing. And then um, I do have a quick, two quick questions for things. So, Patty, have you ever used etching cream? Mm. Yes. Um, as a matter of fact, I was an ambassador for a little while. Um, etching cream. Yeah. What's the question about etching cream? Um, we asked. Someone had asked us how to use it. Okay. So, etching cream. Um, you can stipple over your stencil. I would make it sticky with the tack or um, stick and uh, stick. It should be in the medium. Yeah. Drawer. So I would use the stick and re-stick on the back of my stencil uh, so that it stuck, sticks really well. And then you want to make sure that you're using a, if you're doing it on glass, you need to do flat glass um, because curve doesn't work with stencils. You can use your vinyl um, and sort of get it to bend around. It's not a great situation either. So. The flatter and straighter edges your glass is, 
the better off you are, but you do want a sticky back, otherwise stuff seeps under, but it works amazing. I actually have a glass that I made that says Patty on it and I use it all the time. And then we had a question asking, do you think you could use the same technique as we used on the fabric with the bleach with the dye? I don't know. Such I don't a know. good question. We haven't question. thought of that. We haven't done that yet. Yeah, I don't. Dyes usually have to sit in like a washing machine and and or in a bucket of water, and so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know. I don't know. That but is, I I'm going to will be curious write it about down. it. Yeah. Yeah. Fabric. Yeah. Okay. It's a really good, really good list. Really good list. So we do have one more thing. So today, if you use the word miss. Mist. Mist. M I S T. M I S T. Today is 8 15 23. If you spend $40 on studior12.com, you can get 20% off of your order. So use the word mist, M I S T, and then you can yeah. save site wide. And speaking of mist, that's what we are covering today. We had a stencil fan ask us recently how do you paint mist without making it look muddy? And Interesting. So yeah, this muddy. is a fun technique that Patty has used actually in several different ways on her project. So we are going to show you how to do that and how to make it work for everything from yeah. Christmas to summer to fall and everywhere yeah. in between. Here we go. So um, I first um, did this technique with a book, a painting book from Sandra Malone and she was painting um, Cinderella's Castle or Cinderella something and I was painting it for a friend's child and she had this dreamy misty stuff going on and I was like what is this technique and I just love texture in my backgrounds and I have a sub lesson here I'm going to show you so this is what we're going to show today we're going to show how to paint smoke or dreamy star this is a concrete stepping stone dreamy effects or starry sparkly effects or gentle dreamy mist effects so i'm going to show you kind of all of that right here they're all related they're all the same you just want to there's a couple of rules and i want to show you that but first i was getting my board ready and so whoever made the comment about the bell sleeves love this blouse too However, zoop, 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 that's what happens when you use bell sleeves. And so I was trying to make the big swipey things and I was getting a little bit chunky. And so this is my sub lesson. So I just wanted it darker so I could show the technique on here. And um, it was very uneven. So we're gonna find, I'm gonna show you how to fix uneven background texture. Okay, so 60 grit sandpaper, sanding blocks. We will put an Amazon link down below for you guys. These are magic. Um, you can use a block of wood. You can use the hand, like you can fold up a piece of sandpaper and do it. It's not the same. You need one or two of these. I have three. So I have 220 and I have four. I have, actually I have a, a ton of, okay, this is the 220, this is the 120, and then this is the 60. So by having one of these preloaded with all the things, you have everything that you need to take care of your sanding needs. And then I just keep them all stacked up over the edge. But I'm gonna take my 60. So this is mm, streaky and it's interesting, but not super great. So I'm just gonna sand. I wanna show you how to fix it. So if you are maybe heavy handed painter, um, I am absolutely a heavy handed painter. Um, so if you are that, then sometimes you're gonna to need to know how to back things down just a little bit. So I'm gonna sand, watch what happens in this big old chunky chunk there. It just, um, I got my hair cut today and he was like, let me razor that in for you, right? That's basically what we're doing here is we're razoring in that highlight so it's not so chunky. So see how that already blended right there? It's almost gone. And then I will, you'll see that my finger is always on this front corner and then it has a little indent for your thumb. And I will push and twist my sanding block so it's just a little bit that way. So it's, it looks like I'm flat but I'm actually lifting up a little bit if I wanna cut through. It 
Steve's week to vacuum, so I'm going to make a big mess for him. <laughs> okay, so see how that's evening out. And then if you want to reach over and get the other side, flip it over so that you're not having to like, you know, that's a Go ahead and yes. translate that one, right? Um, our friend Esther said they have lots of wineries in Washington, so yes. maybe we'll have to take our take our painting and take it on the on road. The road. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if you have wineries, Washington State, or yeah, um, yeah. I'm going to assume, yeah. Yeah, I just so. got back from Washington State visiting my kids, and I've got to say the wineries are amazing. Okay, so we'll get that evened out. What an easy way to even out. So when you think, oh, like I hate that, just know that you have these tricks. That's what I like to teach you is the tricks to make things easier and faster and better um, so that your paintings sparkle and shine. That's my goal for you. And while you're doing this, Ellen asked, can Krylon, the um, 1311, be sprayed on a painted canvas? Um, I would think so. Depends on your medium. Um, I honestly don't know if it's going to be oil-based friendly as well. I know it's acrylic friendly. Um, I don't oil-base things, so um, I don't know about that. If you, if anybody else on this um, live, live, thank you. Um, I was like group chat. <laughs> what are we on? Um, if anybody else knows the answer to that about the oil base or not, then that would be great to share. I don't think I could oil base permanently because I'm too impatient to wait for it to dry. Like, I think that would be hard for me. Okay, so I think that's good enough. So we've just got it nice and evened out. And what I've done also, get some of this off of here. Steve, sorry, bud. It's fine, it's fine. It's fine. Um, what I've also done is I've brought in the background color so it gave it like a third element. Um, so I kind of love that. And I'm gonna take a stencil because I want to show you how to weave in the technique around a stencil. So I'm going to go over here, take a stencil. Um, when you're taping your stencil, give it two tapes, two corners, two sides. And that'll be steady. Okay, take our dome brush and we'll just go in a cream color. Always offload and never ever do what I'm doing right now, so I'm going to move it. Never sit your offloading cloth or paper towel on top of your project because you would not believe how many times things seep through. There's more water in your brush. You shouldn't have water in these brushes anyway. Uh, but never ever set anything on top of your project. So I'm gonna go in here. I've offloaded about five times. I'm gonna scumble. I love our dome brushes, they don't bleed under. Um, you need to know about these. Um, if you need brushes, that code mm -hmm. MIST, M-I-S-T, um, on studior12.com will give you 20% off your $40 purchase and so you can get your brushes on sale. Yep. So that is Ta -da! brilliant. Yeah. You can never, I, I think, I think I've estimated you need about 25 of these brushes to be like a really active painter. If you are a beginner painter, one set will do you. Um, just know that if you change colors, it's difficult to change colors because if they get wet, you have to wait till they dry. That's the disadvantage is they're a natural fiber. So they um, totally need to be dry when you use them. If you use them wet, you're gonna make a stinking mess. Okay, so we're gonna go there. We're gonna take that off. We got farm living. So let's build some smoke and some mist. So misting, smoking, all of that stuff is all gonna be kind of the same technique, but there's things that you do to make it cool. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go into my gray family. So what we have is we have steps. So we talked about this before, they call it value. Um, and so this is a value of 10. If you think about stairs going up from a basement, in the basement, it's gonna be the darkest, and so then in the daylight, it's gonna be the lightest. So we have 10 stairs. White is your, um, your sunshine, and then black is your basement, okay? And then you have 10 steps 
total going up and that your colors, this is gonna be like in the middle and this is gonna be at like number eight going up. So we're here like maybe like five, eight, 10, something like that. So we wanna use stair steps and if you do them too close together, if you do steps um, eight, nine, 10, then you won't be able to tell the difference in anything. So you wanna do every couple of steps, but you don't wanna go from black to light or from black to white. So um, make sure that you're not skipping steps. Um, think about the skipping steps as like the Amazon jungle with the, the wood um, ropes um, steps going or bridge going over the, the thing with allig alligators in it. And then you have like three steps missing in the middle and then you fall through and you dun dun dun. So <laughs> you wanna be careful of that. So don't, don't skip steps. Every two steps you can jump over, but you don't want to do more than that. So we're going to go into our medium color, which is our gray. And if you think about it, if you look at your paint bottle and you set it on your piece, if I squint my eyes at that, it should kind of fade into my background. This is going to be setting a platform for my color. Okay, okay. so can you tell me what colors we are going to be? Yeah, what? we're going to use, I'm using 13, 23, and 27. And that correlates with somewhere it's way under one of these books so we have all of our paints on a paint chip chart and so if you want to know exactly what colors we're using these are available on the website as a digital download or as a um, a printed calibrated color chart okay okay so now we're going to pick up dry brush we're going to pick up, we're going to dirty brush into this. When you do your initial anything with this, you want to make sure that you are um, wiping off all of your excess products so that you don't set down anything too dramatic. So number one, this needs to rest on there nicely so it barely shows up. It's going to set the stage for the next color, the lighter and lighter and lighter color. Okay, and then we're going to go, like if we were building our fire, so we have our fire coming here, I would build this, just rubbing, doing exactly how I made the stencil happen, swirling. I'm gonna swirl, and then I would wind it around so my smoke goes up, and then it travels. I'm telling a story, right? So I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna travel, I wanna go behind my lettering, I'm gonna go around here, and then pick it back up to take it out of the scene. So make sure you know your destination when you're getting ready to do these techniques. You want a destination for sure. And it can be whatever your destination is. So we'll pretend like our fire is here. And so we're going to take this. And so you can barely see. I'm going to go through the living. I'm going to head out to the farm. Pick up a little bit more paint. Always offload. Always, always offload. And then this swirl is going to be kind of a big swirl. So then I'm gonna come out here and then I'm gonna end out here. Okay, so that's my path. And I'll go back and make it a little wider. Okay, and now I'm gonna go wipe this color out and then we're gonna go into number 23. I think my lid is all jacked up. Ooh, hi, and also unshook up. So let's talk about shaking your paint. Um, so Steve, can you see this over here? Yeah, Steve's going there, he's navigating. So this got all separated. Something that you can do if you don't own a million bottles of paint is you can turn your paint bottles over every month or two and then the separation will travel from one end to the other and you won't have to shake your paint very much. But in this case, we obviously haven't used number 23 very often recently. It's a good gray, I don't know why we haven't used it. Um, so we'll just shake it up, shaky, 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 shaky. And then once you do the hokey pokey, and now you have, a, your paint should always look sort of like an egg yolk. So if your paint is flat like an egg white, then your paint is not shook up. And then if it is like an egg yolk, then you're good. And so then dirty brush, I'm gonna go into just a little bit. So I wanna load my paint. So see how that dark gray is in a big area? I want to load my paint in the middle of that big area so that I get just a little bit. I can use this brush big by loading little. That makes sense. 
So now I'll wipe that off. And now we'll go into the middle of the path that I've played. So I'm not making big swirls, I'm making oh, baby swirls now. Straight up the middle. Okay, so see how that brightened. Okay, so now on this brown, I'm using gray. Um, if on these other colors, I'm going to use a blue, a blue and purple family. Excuse me. So know that you can change. So the, the idea was that your colors were muddy was the question. So in here, I'm not paying attention to any of my color family whatsoever. I am only using colors that are in um, the smoke family, if you will. Okay, so now we'll get um, a little bit of white and a little dab will do you. So now with the white, we do exactly what we did, but we do it even smaller. So this is gonna be a smaller bit of highlight. So we're basically just building a, a highlight from here to here to here, and we're graduating our highlights. And now this is gonna go right up the middle. And I almost could just kind of go in a row a little bit. So just, Debbie asked, so you just keep using a dirty brush? Yes. Um, your paints will get neutralized by the paint before, which kind of makes them like a blended family. Now, this is not as dreamy as this, okay? So this is a little bit more stiff. So how do we fix that, or how do we deal with that? I'm gonna go backwards to my beginning color. I'm gonna do a big old load. I'm gonna really wipe it off, because it's got a little bit of those lighter colors in it. And now what I want to do is loosen it up just a little bit. So on these outside edges, I'm just going to widen everything. And your stencils, I don't want to break it to y'all, but your stencils are reusable. So you can use them over and over again, like thousands of times. So as long as you wash them, um, once they get kind of gummy, they have to be washed but you can lay this stencil right back over. Say I did this and it went through my lettering, lay it right back on top and I can redo my lettering and it will make everything, everything all right. So that is how we loosen that up and we could even, you could go to a smaller brush and you could go into, I'm gonna mix the two colors. If I wanted to make a little bit of wiggly waggly I could make a little bit of inner motion within that and just kind of create a little bit more movement and stuff. So that is how you get a dusty, smoky look. Okay, okay. so Jeffrey asked, are you going around the letters? Um, I'm kind of going through them, which is why I said that they're reusable so you yeah. can lay that back over. Um, when I did this guy right here, I went kind of through them, but the colors were so close to the colors that I stenciled it really wasn't an issue. When I also think it's going to depend on what look you want. If you're you in want. front of it. Yes. Yeah. So if you yes. want it to look like it's coming out, then you just do it through it or you yes. can paint over. And then in that case, mm -hmm. if you want it to be in the back, like on that fire pit stencil, you are not going to want to paint your beautiful ombre. Yes. And don't do your ombre until <laughs> after. So until you might done. put your base coat of mm -hmm. your 79 color put that on there, get that base, right? And then go ahead and create your smoke, get that all going, yeah. and then put it back over. So the neat thing about stencils is you can lift them up, put them mm -hmm. back down, lift them up, put them back down yes. as many times as you want. And I love that. And um, I've told the story before. We went to um, a workshop and they were using the vinyl and my friend put hers on a little janky and she could not finish her product, her project because she couldn't get another vinyl mm -hmm. to put the thing back on top to fix the mistake that she made. Yeah. And so um, stencils are very forgiving. Yeah. I love and that. With this, this project, with this mm -hmm. video, I shared the link with you guys. This is one, the Welcome to Our Fire Pit. It's is one of our all-time bestsellers. It's one of our bestsellers. It's also one of probably our most educational videos. It has, I think the title of the video is seven seven tips 
you're going to learn how to paint the banner mm -hmm. without actually having an empty banner to paint. You learn drop shadow, you learn ombre, you learn how to paint fire and smoke. Yeah, the blocks around the fire are just holes and you learn how to make them dimensional. Same with the marshmallows. It's a background. I mean, there's a ton of it. Yeah, and I think I want to reinforce that. Um, Steve, are we on this camera? Yeah. Okay, so um, I want to reinforce that, that our projects, um, so it's very difficult. If I just had this board here and I showed you how to do this little smoky technique, you'd be like, oh, whatever. Like, I don't know why I need that. Well, mm -hmm. when I show you this project, now you understand why you need the smoke. And so most of our projects, they are projects and they are pretty and they're beautiful and that's good. Mm -hmm. But the techniques don't stay. Um, I've been canning a lot of pickles. Don't stay because it's a sweet pickle or a dill pickle. Stay because you need to know how to do the pasteurization technique. Right. You know, like stay for the lesson. And that that is why you would go. Yeah, even if you don't love the design yeah. we're doing maybe you don't have a fire pit and you're you don't think you would like, paint that project yeah. but you Still might watch. paint cinderella's castle yes and you might paint the stepping stone that i'm going to show you and you might paint a halloween project they're yeah. all the same techniques and i'm going to show you that yeah. so i'm going to put fire pit away and set him off and we're going to go into i'm going to show just on this brown the difference in the dreaminess can you see that not yet yes okay so this is the same little dance that i did here it's exactly the same right i'm going to show you how we make this sparkle now so now it's going to be a magic dust okay so now it's fairy dust and i love that and if you want to paint <laughs> stepping stones they're so heavy um this i'm going to bring it back okay this stepping stone was outside of my studio um, at my house, um, because I used to only have a studio at my house, um, was outside my studio for two years, un, unprotected, okay? There was four of them, and I had them in a row in different colors, and they were outside, and they have not been touched up. They have traveled to trade shows since they were outside. This is how you make a paint sandwich, and I'm not going to tell you any more than that. You have to go watch that video, and Carrie will put the link into yep. that for you. Um, it's amazing. And then the doing a butterfly through a stencil, also supreme time saver. Like getting all of those lines exactly right. Ugh, it's ridiculous. So we're going to make it magical. So we do this in a couple of ways. I'm going to put my brushes in water. I'm going to watch our bell sleeves. And we're going for our white wonder. Okay, so the white wonder is how we're going to get little spatters. I'm going to show you how to control your spatters so that um, you have mastery over your spatters. So we're gonna start with our middle gray and we're gonna make it into a milky texture, milky consistency, okay? And then I need a really heavy handled brush. So I'm gonna go for one of our bigger um, dome brushes. And then you always, 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 always move your coach purse Move your nice things, move your family heirlooms. Don't do this near anything. And then you always spatter off over here. So now I want to hit exactly on this misty trail. So I'm gonna move this so that my line is where my spatter would go. Okay, so I'm gonna anchor my brush and I'm gonna tap just a little bit and then I'll move my brush. So see how that kept everything basically in. And then if you didn't like something, I'm gonna do it the pre-COVID way. And we're just gonna go in there and suck them off with a little bit of saliva. Okay, so we're gonna go here and we're gonna do the same thing. We wanna go directionally. And we'll just, and then that's your little magic dust. And then we go into our white. And then we tap off either on your palette or on the other. And then we increase. And you can turn your brush on its side. Okay, so we're gonna increase. Now I'll even kind of shoot it towards something. So if you don't like something, you can go in. You can also use 
water and clean that up. And so then if you want a little bit brighter, I think it's amazing how you can control the main part of the spattering. Um, that was just an amazing technique for me. All right, I'm gonna go up here and give it a little bit more. I hope there's some hippie noodles blowing right now. You guys, if you love this, make sure that you leave us a little heart. Um, give us a thumbs up. Um, YouTube really, really likes thumbs ups and subscribes. So make sure that you let us know that you love it. And then we're gonna go in and we're gonna add the sparkles. Okay, so for sparkles, we're gonna do the old fashioned, amazing back end of a small brush. So that is how you're gonna make your sparkles. And so you're gonna add little sparkles and your dots will get progressively smaller as you dot them. So you could start off, if you wanted a smaller dot, you could go dot, dot over on your palette and then your dots will be smaller because you did that. And that right there is worth the price of admission. I didn't know that dots graduated as you dotted them. It makes perfect sense, but I just didn't know. So now we look for a round or a liner. Okay. And now we're gonna go thin our paint. So we've got already a little bit thinned paint. And then I'm gonna get rid of a lot of, I've got a round brush here. I'm gonna get rid of a lot of my paint. I don't want it soupy. So I'm just kind of twisting and pulling away just to get rid of it. I could also blot it on my paper towel. So now we're gonna go from our dots out and you're just gonna make a little kind of starburst situation. And then you could go right on top of that. Rinse your brush out. Never leave these fine tips in water. Always, always, always take them out and clean them. Tap, tap, tap. And now right on top of here, I'm gonna pull. So if I want fat spatters, then I go way up high, I'll look like snow everywhere. If I want tight spatters, I'm gonna drop my brush, I'm gonna anchor it, I'm gonna drop it all the way down. I'm gonna move my brush back so that the spatters will bounce into that little star shape. And so there's your magic spatter. And it looks like a little dreamy spatter dust is so cool. It's cute. You guys, this is so much fun to do. I love it. Love, love, love. Um, this comes in super handy when you are doing Christmas projects, if you are doing um, kid projects, um, if you are doing smoking projects, butterfly projects. It's amazing. Like there's so many reasons to do this. Okay, so that covers the basics. I'm just like in love with this little area right there. Doesn't that look yeah, great? It does look great. Like if you like farm living, it's the life for me. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now I've got a based board. It has a little bit of a slip slap. Um, I spent way more time on this one. This is a two part video. Um, and so Carrie is gonna link that for you. And we've got spatters in the background and stars. There is a lot going on in this project that you are gonna learn from. You will love it. You can use it with any colors. So like when you're looking at this and you're like, but I don't want a purple Halloween sign, change it to orange. Um, using what we learned today about these values, what I did on this project is I used Three, I used a blue and a purple and then lightened them up. And I did it in these values so that they would become these lighter things. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of that. We've had a couple people say that this was perfect timing. Someone said that they are painting the fire pit video or the perfect. fire pit project this week. Yeah. And they were gonna go back and watch the video. Someone else said they are painting the stepping stone this week I and they were it. gonna go back and watch the video. So this works perfectly. You guys, on, on the stepping stones, if you see them at your store um, in any season and you think you're ever gonna want one, buy them when you see them because they usually only come in during extreme parts of the summer or spring to middle summer. Get them when you see them because they're actually like unicorns, they're elusive. All right, so this technique is very much like the other technique, but it's bigger. So I have, um, can you see that okay? Depends on which camera you're showing it to. Yeah, where do we want to be? You guys tell me. I can see it on mine. 
Okay, can you see the difference between the two colors? Okay, so I've got some purple and I've got some blue, and that's like your background is gonna to be to establish where you put that. So what I'm gonna do is take a big old dome brush. I'm gonna flip my paper towel as long as it's not wet, it's wet. Um, I also, when I'm doing the wiping off on the mist, I like to use a double paper towel. Um, so I use the, like those tri paper towels and then I like to use a double version. It is more like a pillow and it sucks more of the paint out so I get that misty dreaminess. And so that's important. Okay, so the purple that I used was um, number one. And we're just gonna spit that out. I haven't painted a lot of purple. I'm surprised that wasn't really separated. And then in the same theory of the grays, <laughs> those grays, I'm gonna do the same thing. I've got my dark purple, my next lighter one, and then I'm gonna mix this. Um, so that's gonna be my series, but I'm gonna mix this one into this one so it's not like four steps and I'm down with the alligators. Okay. So. Eh, separated. And it's very full. Um, if you use the um, honey bottles for your paint, don't overfill them. Leave them like right about there and they're easier to shake. If they're full, you're not going to get anywhere. Okay, so put some of that out. So now we're going to make big old misty areas. So I'm gonna go into my purple and I'm gonna neutralize my brush with the dark. So basically, when I say that, I mean that this is the color of purple that I used, so I want it to be the mother color on my brush so that I don't end up scaring the color on here. So now I'll pick up that little bit within, like see how we did that? That's got the dark purple around and then a little bit of bright. So now I'll wipe that off really good because I haven't used it on my project at all. So now I want to do bigger scumbles. So this is a good scumbly area. So I'm so soft to pressure. It is just like, you know, touching the baby's toes kind of thing. You just want to be so careful. And then you're going to just kind of build organic shapes. That means organic and patty. And so you'll just build on the slip slap that you did. And we have a whole video on how to do this whole background technique. And then you would pick up your white, but you're not gonna use it straight. So you kind of always wanna sneak up on it. Okay, so I'm gonna go into that little bit of purple. Okay. And then I'm gonna go into a teeny bit of white, which is a really lot white. I'm gonna actually knock that off. So now that's what that looks like. And then I'll go and wipe that off. And really, you're telling a story here, dark, light, lighter. And I think I need just a hair more of my light. And now I'm really going to use really light pressure. So now I would be right within that area. And it also needs to be dry. Um, super, super, like huge exclamation point. Um, if it's not dry, then the new paint will stick to the old paint and then you'll end up with a big old gooey area that you'll have to do the sanding technique or something else to it. You can fix it. Um, you can spatter on it. You can do all of that stuff, but just know that it has to be dry between your layers. Um, if it's wet, then you're toast. Okay, so now I'll just kind of do a little bit of movement around. So say that was getting a little bit light, I could back up. I'm extra offloading so that I get dreamy. I'm gonna go right around that area and we're just gonna make some dreaminess happen. And then you could kind of carry over and just be like, I think I'm gonna spread some of that dreaminess around. I'm getting some glare. So you could move that around and start just dancing all over your project and then pick up your brighter and your brighter. And in this case, um, I did a little bit of, the blue was the mix of the blue going into, so that was Carrie, that's 41, 62, 27. 
So I went into some of this teal color on the blue areas. And just to keep this not 85 minutes long, because um, I tend to do 85 minutes long, I'm gonna show you how to spatter on this. We're gonna go into that middle color, heavy-handed brush, keep your coach purse away from this, and then you're gonna come over here, and the spatters are kind of what make the magic. And then if you wanted to, you could spatter around yourself. It's too wet. And you could go over here and have some deeper spatters. Spatters will diffuse, and so they will make everything look super, um, I don't know, deep. It's a really cool technique. Love it. Okay, last one. And I hope that you guys are enjoying this and make sure that you are subscribing. Um, ring the bell. We have some neat things coming up and you're going to want to know about them and some of the things you're going to want to know about first. So make sure that you um, subscribe so that you get notified very first when we have stuff going on. All right, so this one is where we take a little star and then we're going to show how to do something that radiates. So it's the same technique, but now we're radiating. So I'm going to take a little star stencil and I'm going to flip this board. And we'll choose, I'll choose just this medium little star right here. And we're gonna make him into a, I'm gonna make him the medium color because I think I wanna highlight him and I think that's too wet. Okay, so we're gonna use our medium color. And I'm stippling for good coverage. Now something that you could do is you could spatter through your stencil. That is something, um, I don't think I've actually shown that. I think we need to do that. I'm gonna mask this star. So paper towels, all that stuff is really great. Now if I'm masking my stars, I should also mask and take all my stuff away. So I can refold these and reuse them, um, but just mask everything. Spatters travel like you would not believe. Okay, we're gonna leave it at that. Go into our color. I'm gonna go into the white with my wet paint. And now I'm gonna spatter right on that hole. And let's pull everybody away. So now everything just gets put back how I had it. And then we lift up straight, make sure. So look how fun that is. Like you can totally make spatters happen within like the whole of the stencil. So it's a um, super cool, super fun technique. So we're gonna go into a medium sized brush. So this is a half inch. And we're gonna go make our starry dust. And so we'll start with our middle color. And then off of each of these, you wanna be careful your dots stay wet forever. Off of each of these, you're gonna make kind of a stripe. Ah, I smeared one. I would recommend um, blow drying your, um, I think I need a smaller brush too. Blow drying your um, star. If you did the spatters through a stencil, spatters are terrible about staying wet forever. Speaking of blow drying, we had someone ask if you can use the blow dryer on your dome brush. Um, I think you'd be there for a really long time. They're super thick. Um, so we have this. Um, so this is how your dome brush is made. And so that is 100% fibers all the way through this big glue column. Okay, so they, that's, that's a lot of natural fiber to get into the middle of that. It's not like, you know, my hair, I have a lot of hair, but it's thin. These are thick and natural bristles that suck up water and you'd be a long time. So I, generally speaking, it takes a good solid 24 hours to dry a brush. Um, we have a wire rack that we put our brushes in and you could put, I've got a tower fan right here. 
You could put a little tower fan or something next to it so you hurry the process up. But it just plan ahead, know that you have um, a fat brush to, to take care of. So we'll take this and we'll make our swirls. And then after I get some swirls on there, I'll go in and make them a little bit more linear. Always turning. Okay, and then we're going to, you can do a couple of things. Um, what I've done here, is I have done like a little bit of a dome brush um, or a round brush and just kind of stippled my way out. And so you could make a few extras. I'm gonna go into a new little brush and pretend like, you can also watch this one. We have a link to that one as well. But I'm just showing you like the background technique is the same. This radiating thing is the same. The smoke is the same and the magic dust is the same. It's all the same technique. And really, if you can do that technique, then you can swirl on your stencils and that's the same technique too. This is such fun. So now I can add a little bit of extra body to that. And it has a little extra shine. Jeffrey asked, could you use white behind the star to make it look like a shooting star? I mean, yes. Sure, that's a good idea. and then just play with it. Like that's the secret. So now I can go into a little bit of white, wipe it off really good, and now I could just make a little bit of trailing vapor. It'll be brighter near the star. And so we just kind of wiggle wiggle. Like, look at how pretty that looks. So amazing. It looks really pretty from overhead. Yeah, that's, you guys. It's just like, you know? That's the technical term for that. <laughs> I got this. Okay, so to do the white, I'm gonna mix some white, because I didn't really get this very, this is very white. Um, I'm gonna mix this white with a little bit of that middle purple. And then we're gonna show the dotting to do the thing. So we're just gonna pull it down. I'm looking over at me to make sure that I, and then as you get out here, you wanna do less and less. Our friend Vicki had a good tip. A Lazy Susan works great for helping turn Oh your my gosh, yes Vicki. Yep, that's a great idea. We made the best Lazy Susans on planet Earth. And then stuff got expensive and Ted got older and then he was like, nope, never again. <laughs> no Lazy Susan for you. No Lazy Susan for you, but my goodness, they were amazing. Donna says, it looks like a sparkling diamond. It's magic, isn't it? Okay, so now I did that mix of the purple, so they're lighter. I'm gonna do one more pass with just white on it. So see how I do that? I never, ever, ever, it's like that person, like I'm the one that's jumpy at my house. If my husband walks in, I go, ah! Oh my gosh. You know, are you that way? No, but you're that no, way for I sure. I am that way, yeah. Here yeah, I mean, I, it's me all the time. I'm actually way better than I used to be. I used to always be like, ah! Person. But um, sorry if you have speakers or headphones on. <laughs> um, anyway, so but you gotta like, kind of like give warnings. Like you're giving a little bit of like sneaking up notice. You're like, Hey, I'm coming in the house. Hey, here I am. Step, step, step. So we're trying to do that with this technique. We're not trying to startle the star. So now not hitting the same places, we'll hit other places and then that will create even more depth. So we have the background, we have the star. Now this is a little bit dirty right there where I messed with that one. Um, so I'll show you how to fix that and then we will be done. So make sure you give us thumbs up. I, do, I did just get an exciting message from Stephanie. So if you guys have ever contacted our customer service, Stephanie Stephanie's is amazing. Who you've, who you've worked with and she is wonderful. And she just messaged and said, we have a couple of stencil fans who reached out 
and they are coming to our in-person event. They are driving from Georgia, or oh, coming from Georgia. That's so, so amazing. So we are super excited about that. We've you guys, had, it's gonna be so good. We've had people from a lot of different parts of the country mm -hmm. who have already purchased their tickets. I think yeah. Maryland, um, what did we say, Washington? Someone from Washington, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Yep. Um, Indiana, we have a few from Ohio, yeah, Kentucky, yeah. now Georgia. So we have people coming from all over to visit. You guys, when well, we excited. did our grand opening for our, our shop here, we had um, four countries and 14 states represented, and it was amazing. So like we love Yay. to have you guys here. Okay, so that is our lesson. I hope that you love it. And I think, do we have any other questions? Um, we have a couple that you and I are going to work <laughs> yeah. on offline. So if we do not get your question answered, we do come back and answer those yeah. afterward. And if you don't hear from us, shoot us a message on fa um, in our Facebook Messenger yeah. or send us an email and we will yeah, we get work, those um, This girl right here, let's give credit where credit is due, she makes sure <laughs> stuff gets done. And um, like that's, it's an amazing gift and talent and she cares so deeply about getting the right answer. So she'll be like, hey, got a thing, need, a, need an answer. You know, like we just, we'll chase it down. And then if we don't know, we get online and research um, and make sure that we give you the right answer. Yeah. So we are all about, you guys, thank you for being here today. We appreciate you and we've given you her.